Imagine you have your fancy website to build, including the front end and the back end, host it and try to run it, and boom, you see this error. Access to fetch at uh, this blah 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 from origin blah 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 has been blocked by Coors policy. If at this moment you're wondering, what is Coors? You are not alone. I once had the same question. In this video, I'm going to show you how to address this problem quickly, and it's easy. And then we're going to dive deep a little bit to talk about the concepts behind the course and why does it exist, what kind of problem does it address, and what does it not. But first, let's take a look. What does the code look like at this moment? There I have a project of BE for backend and a project of FE for frontend and a console application of HC. I'll explain more about that. Let's don't worry too much about it now. The backend is created strictly from the web API template provided by .NET Core CLI. It will be hosted on HTTPS localhost port 8080. And if we invoke weather forecast on it, you're going to see an array of data. Each element is going to have a date, temperature, and a summary on it. And that is our backend. For frontend, the core part it is the index.html. There are some hard coded text welcome, what is the weather? Then there's the JavaScript section. It will issue a GET request to the backend, parse the JSON, it is returned, and then it will extract the summary of the first element and put it onto the page. And that is the front end. And it will be hosted on HTTPS localhost port 8081. Notice it is a different port than 8080. And the request is currently not working, it's blocked by the browser. And I'll show you how to fix that. The fix is very quick and easy, especially if you have done this before. If you want, code with me. The first step is to register a core service. You do that by calling this add cores method. It takes in a delegate, and you will be able to hold it to an instance of a cores option. I am calling it setup. On the option, you call at default policy, and that will give you a policy builder. And then you use the policy builder to allow different origins. For example, for our front end, the origin need to be in the whitelist. Is this the HTTPS localhost 8081? The second step is to update the pipeline. So when a request comes in, ASP.NET Core knows to handle the cores. The code is as simple as this uh, line 28. But pay attention to the position. It usually happens after the HTTPS redirection, but before any authorization or authentication. That's it. Easy PD. Let's see how it works in the browser. Works. And that is how you fix it. Under 30 seconds. Have you wondered why was the problem? What was that to course policy? And why does it exist? Let's talk about that. Course stands for cross origin resource sharing. To understand the course, we need to firstly understand another concept, SOP, same origin policy. SOP is simple. It's just for browsers, any documentation, like a JavaScript or a HTML page, Loaded from one origin can only access resource from the same origin. Let me highlight something here to help the understanding. First thing, this is for browsers. That means this policy might not apply to other clients. What other clients? For example, the Thunder client that you just saw for testing, Postman, Fiddler, etc. etc. And on the other hand, Almost all the popular browsers implement this policy, like Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Safari, almost any browser that you can name name. That is because SOP is invented explicitly to secure the browsing scenario. Document or files downloaded to your machine for execution, including HTML for rendering, um, CSS for styling, 
But the major object in this context is actually JavaScript. That's where asynchronous request happens. And then origin. What is an origin? What is treated the same origin? Origin, aka the triple, is combined with the scheme, host, and port. You probably are very familiar with it already. Let's take a look at some examples. HTTP localhost versus the HTTPS localhost. The scheme on the left is HTTP, on the right is HTTPS, so they are different origin. Also, it doesn't matter, but uh, the well-known port for this set is different as well. It's 80 versus 443, right? Now let's see a second set. Localhost versus 127.0.0.1 and they are different origin because the host is different. Set 3, HTTPS localhost 8080 versus 8081, different port, different origin. How about this? HTTPS www.codewithstar.net versus uh, HTTPS codewithstar.net. They are different origin. And the next one is even more obvious. 3W versus videos, not the same origin. Now these would be counted as the same origin. They share the same scheme, host, and port. Now we all know what is the same origin. Let's look into why SOP exists. To explain that, let's take a look at what generally happened when you visited the website inside a browser. You have a browser on your left hand side, that's on your box. And on the internet, there's a website. The website contains resources, HTML, JavaScript, images. So you punch in the web address, www.website.com for example. There's the initial request. It will download the HTML and JavaScript to your local box, along with a piece that might identify you, the BFamers cookie. And the browser rendered the HTML, downloaded the image, and start to show the page to you. At the same time, it started the JavaScript. As it was running, for instance, the JavaScript realized, oh, there is another piece I need to fetch from the backend API. So it issued another request. Let's assume the piece of cookie is attached. It then knows it's you and returned something specific to you. For example, the shopping cart content. And that is a very, very rough picture of what happened. Now, chances are your browser is going to be used accessing multiple websites without the SOP. JavaScript from one website got the cookie from the cookie store could issue requests to another website. And if that is too abstract and it's not too scary, think about this. You access mybank.com or actually yourbank.com and then whatever malicious site.com and then imagine the JavaScript loaded from malicious.com start to access mybank.com. We're probably not going to enjoy the day. And that is why SOP is in introduced really, really quick after JavaScript is invented by a company named Netscape. Well, coming back to SOP and cores, SOP secured the website by preventing cross-site reference. It does cause some trouble when you want to separate the front end from back end into different origins. And that is where cores are useful. It is basically an allow list of the origins to allow cross-origin resource sharing. For example, by default, no other origin could have accessed mybank.com, but the backend could voluntarily allow access from, let's say, frontend.mybank.com. And in our case, we created a course policy. The backend of uh, localhost 8080 allowed the front end of uh, localhost 8081. And after that, the JavaScript in our uh, front end could access the back end. And that is cores. Why is it and how it works? Last but not least, you probably can figure it out by yourself sooner or later. That cores is not a security or access control mechanism. Don't think that uh, an origin is not on the list that 
to the other service cannot access it. That only applies to browsers. And it is mentioned there are all kinds of different clients. To demo it, I will firstly remove the course configuration. Now the client is going to fail again. Now let me bring up the HTTP client project. It is a console application intended to hit the backend. The deal is there's no concept of origin for the HTTP client, and it doesn't care about the SOP. It doesn't care about the cores. What we are going to verify is even if there's no cores policy, the HTTP client can still access the resource. And let's run it and see. You see it? The browser is still not working, but the HTTP client still can access the backend. Again, course is not for security. It protects the browser users. It is not designed to protect your backend API. And that is the full story of course. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumb up to let me know. Subscribe if you are interested in .NET technology and you are interested to hear more about these topics. Keep coding, keep improving, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.